party at CCHQ Conservative campaign headquarters. Let's have a watch. Um, it's not her boyfriend. No, it's not. Can we spread that? Yeah, yeah. Let's make sure. Yes. It's a party um, news. It's a ad. Instagram live. As long as we don't scream, we're like... Well, I'm pretty sure I'm impressed with what you're saying. Of course. Laura, what do you think of this? Laura. <laughs> so, what do you think of this? It's terrible. I mean, this was laughing, talking about bending the rules. There's photos of social distancing yes. in the room that are clearly being ignored. Yeah. What's your reaction? Well, I, I think it's um, uh, completely out of order. Um, uh, as I understand it, um, this was a, uh, an event that was organised by the people who were running uh, the mayoral campaign for Sean Bailey. Uh, they uh, had obviously behaved in a way which is unacceptable. Um, I understand that the people who organised this were subsequently investigated and disciplined by Conservative campaign headquarters. I don't know if this video is available to the people doing that investigation and who were responsible for that disciplinary procedure, but it was certainly the case that a, I think a photograph had um, emerged beforehand showing some of the people at this party posing with a cake and, and, and behaving in an unacceptable fashion. So um, I just want to apologise um, to, uh, to everyone, really, uh, who, looking at that image, will think, well, these are people who are um, flouting the rules that were put in place to protect us all. You said that there was a photo of the event before. The video yes. didn't emerge until now. Um, no fines were issued for this event. Mm. Do you think the police should investigate now, looking at the video? Well, it's not for me to say whether or not the police should investigate, but the, the, the evidence is out there. Um, uh, as you say, and, and this is my understanding, uh, this video wasn't available, wasn't publicly mm. available beforehand. There was a photograph. Mm. Um, uh, there have been a number of occasions subsequently to events when information's been shared and the police have reviewed again whether or not an investigation should take place. But quite properly, and I, and I know this sounds sort of very... Uh, bureaucratic and procedural, but you will appreciate, I think people watching will appreciate, that politicians shouldn't tell the police what they should and shouldn't investigate. The police should be able to make that decision and then follow through without politicians providing a commentary on that. You mentioned a photograph. We can have a look at the photograph, uh, I think, uh, that has been available yes. previously. Now, two of the people in this photograph mm. have received honours. Sean Bailey, who was the candidate for London yep. Mayor, left the party before the video was filmed. Yep. Uh, and also the guy who is lying at the front of that picture uh, wearing the Christmas braces, mm. uh, Ben Mallet, Conservative aide. Yep. Should they have been given honours? Well, again, the, the whole process by which honours are given is one that I think is rightly the subject of debate at the moment. Yes, so but what's the, your opinion on it? Well, I think you have to follow the current rules. You can, you can have a debate about changing the rules, um, and I think that debate is well worth having, but as long as we have the current rules, they, they go something like this. A retiring Prime Minister, any retiring Prime Minister, can put forward people for honours. Prime Minister gets that list. Prime Minister shouldn't really interfere with that list. Um, Rishi Sunak did not. He accepted it. Then it goes to uh, the House of Lords Appointments Committee, which is an independent body that decides whether or not someone who's been put forward for a peerage should get it. As I understand it, and I never saw any of these lists, uh, the House of Lords Appointments Committee took some names off. The, you know, they, ha they had their own reasons for doing so, but it was clearly the case that there were some people who were put forward by Boris for peerages whom the House of Lords Appointments Committee deemed not appropriate at this time to be appointed. List goes back. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, is operating on the basis that the House of Lords Appointments Committee has satisfied itself that this is a legit list and then passes it on for final approval okay. to the Palace. Thank you for the rundown for how the honours system works. Um, my question was, do you think the two people in this photo should have received honours? Well, again, I think you should follow appropriate procedures what here. What do you think? I think That's that, the question. Uh, I think that in the past we have had uh, at least one uh, occasion where the House of Lords Appointments Committee's procedures were interfered with by a Prime Minister. I'm not asking Minister. about procedure. I, but no, but I believe you think that, yeah. the people in this photo should have received honours. What do you, Michael Gove, think? I think you should follow the procedures. But what, what do you think? 
I, I think you should follow the procedures. I think it's absolutely important that when you have a process for appointing someone to any public body, including the House of Lords, that you follow the rules. Now, uh, Even, you were... They didn't follow the rules, did they? Well, you, the rules about how people should be appointed to the House of Lords were followed by the Prime Minister. Now, as I said earlier, okay. you and I can argue that the rules are deficient okay. or need to be changed, but what I won't do is pass commentary on someone else's choice. It's for Boris okay. to defend his choice of peers. On the same day as this party, the 14th of December 2020, Matt Hancock was giving a press conference where he said there had been a 14% rise in COVID cases in a week and 420 daily deaths reported. And I just want to read a tweet that someone sent me last night. This is from a guy called Paul. I mean, to be honest, there's lots of people saying very similar things, but mm. this is Paul. He contacted me last night and he tweeted to say uh, this, 14th of December 2020. I remember this date very well. I wasn't at a party. My daughter underwent major surgery at Jet Great Ormond Street. Only one parent was allowed to stay with her. We followed the rules. It's downright disgusting. They're charlatans, they're liars and imbeciles, the lot of them. What would you say to Paul? Sorry. Um, I can't imagine what it must have been like for Paul um, on that day. Um, I think if uh, any member of your family is undergoing major surgery, it's undoubtedly traumatic. The fact that this was happening at the height of the pandemic, when uh, the virus was spreading and people were observing uh, significant rules in order to make sure that they protected others. The fact that this party went ahead uh, is indefensible. Um, the people who were there, uh, I'm sure, feel uh, contrite. Um, uh, I certainly hope they do. Uh, as I say, there was a previous investigation into this, and we now know more about it. But I can only say to, to Paul that I'm, I'm very, very sorry that uh, there were people who were working in government very hard on his behalf, um, not all of whom... Uh, uh, on every occasion will have made the right uh, decision in policy terms, but all of the time we were thinking about how we could help Paul and others. There's a COVID inquiry ongoing at the moment which will look at the decisions that government made. I think one of the most important things that all of us can do is to look back at the decisions that government made and make sure that we're better prepared okay. if a future pandemic comes along. But for Paul and for others, who are grieving, who suffered and who lost um, uh, relatives or whose own family um, uh, had to endure these rules, um, I can only apologise. Now, of course, it comes in a week where the Privileges Committee report yes. tore into Boris mm. Johnson. I mean, you all have read the report. Um, according to the Sunday Times, though, he thinks he can make a comeback. He's been telling his friends Churchill mm. didn't become a Prime Minister till he was 65. Is there room for a Boris Johnson return? Well, I, I am not a particularly gifted clairvoyant. Um, I can't really look into the future and uh, predict with accuracy. As you know, Sophie, I once wrote a book called Michael Portillo, The Future of the Right, so I wouldn't set many, uh, much store by my predictions. Um, so Boris has uh, taken a decision to leave the House of Commons. Uh, he's now writing for the Daily Mail and making arguments on a variety of, of other issues. Um, you know, I wish him well in, in, in that endeavour. Um, and I think that the more important thing is for the government uh, to concentrate on the priorities that the public have assigned to us, making sure that we halve inflation, that we uh, reduce our debt, that we grow the economy, and critically importantly, uh, given what we've been talking about, that we cut NHS waiting lists and, of course, that we stop the votes, that we deal with illegal migration. You've got four looming by-elections now with the resignation of David Warburton. This is not a great time for you, is it? Are you confident in keeping those by-elections? Yes, I am. Um, uh, and again, each of these by-elections has an individual cause. But I think that um, in Somerton and Froome and in Selby, um, in Uxbridge and in Mid-Bedfordshire, I know that we have and will select excellent Conservative candidates. And so I will be working hard in order to stress to people uh, in those constituencies that effective Conservative representation means that on the issues that matter, on tackling inflation, on making sure that we get economic growth, okay. on, on We've got dealing the, list. the... We've got the list. OK, we're going to talk about some of these uh, but things. But it's very important we that people gonna... know come the election I that want, while there may I be four really... by-elections, there are five critical priorities I want to on talk, the economy, I want to talk on the about NHS the economy. and on migration. I want to talk about the economy later. Yeah. Um, but just before I do, David Warburton has given an interview today mm. uh, where he seems to feel that he is the wrong party. 
It's not a great look for you, though, is it, to have another MP who is resigning amid claims of sexual impropriety uh, and drug-taking? Well, uh, again, uh, I, I haven't read the interview that um, uh, Mr Warburton has given to the Mail on Sunday. Quite I understand brief. that he was being uh, investigated and uh, when I think he was uh, acquainted with the results of that investigation, he felt that he had to resign. Uh, when that report is published, all of us can then form a judgment. Right. Now, I could spend another five minutes asking you about Boris Johnson, but I 